Hello, it's Wednesday. Here are the headlines. The government enhancing relations with Repsol. The fight against child abuse is being stepped up with the opening of a children's advocacy center in Linden. Georgetown's City Hall could be repaired soon. And Ghana's first ever youth business summit commenced today. And we update you on Independence Carnival activities. We start this evening by telling you that President David Granger congratulated His Excellency Miguel Diaz Connell on his appointment to the Office of President of the Council of State of the Republic of Cuba. The head of state committed to working with the Cuban leader to strengthen relations between the two nations. A children's advocacy center, CAC, was opened yesterday in the Ministry of Social Protection, Child Care and Protection Agency in Linden. Stefan Gabriel was there and filed this report. The establishment of the center comes as statistics from the last Child Care Protection Agency report 2017 has shown that Linden has had the highest reported cases of child sexual abuse in the country. Child Care Protection Agency's Assistant Director, Tion October. Child Advocacy Centers are centers that we are trying to have in various regions and the reason for so that the privacy where a child can actually report are comfortable so that they could deliver their be interviewed in a comfortable environment where they could actually relate this story comfortably. Instead of going to the police, the uh, us, we want is a multi-discipline sector where everybody's a part of it. The Linden Center features an interviewing room which will provide young victims privacy during interviews. The Blossom Incorporated NGO will manage the facility. Managing Director A.O. Dalgetty Dean spoke of the services being offered. We'll be doing conducting forensic interviews of children who've been sexually abused. We'll be doing therapeutic counseling with them or trauma-informed counseling, um, victim advocacy, court support, um, and also we'll be doing some preventative work, um, parenting classes and outreach sessions to sensitize the area on child sexual abuse. The center located in the former Linden Hospital complex is the seventh of its kind and complements others in regions two, four, five, and seven. They were set up through collaborative efforts with UNICEF and local non government organizations Chad Link and Blossom Incorporated. Reporting for InfoHub, Stefan Gabriel. Tiffany Rodius tells us that CARICOM member states have begun a regional dialogue on a strategy for regional implementation of the WTO Agreement on Trade Facilitation Agreement, TFA. The two-day meeting will identify and validate implementation gaps at the national and regional level, Minister of Foreign Affairs Carl Greenwich said. This participation will help to deepen our understanding and appreciation of the regional approaches and priorities identified in the CARICOM strategy for regional implementation of this trade facilitation agreement. The TFA allows World Trade Organization members who are involved in a customs union or regional economic arrangement to adapt regional approaches. This will assist in implementation of the agreement's provisions. CARICOM's Council for Trade and Economic Development, COTED, approved a regional strategy in 2017 to guide the implementation of the agreement's 18 technical measures. Assistant Secretary General of Trade and Economic Integration, Ambassador Joseph Cox, said the strategy will be the main tool to mobilize technical and financial support for implementation of the TFA in member states. Regional approaches to trade facilitation are intended to harmonize and coordinate cross-border reforms in order to create a consistent, coherent and predictable trade environment throughout the community. Today's dialogue included the Caribbean Development Bank and the Islamic Development Bank. For Info Hub, Tiffany Rogers. Join us after this quick break for some important messages. Daddy. Minister of State Joseph Harmon today met with Director of Repsol, Mikhail Irquaga, and Country Manager Ryan Ramjit to discuss the way forward with the company. Here is Crystal Stahl. Minister Harmon said the government is satisfied with the works being done by the company and looks forward to continued relations. We trust that this relationship will continue and in fact rather than just continue to be deeper because I trust that um, 
in the coming months that there will be more work done by Repsol in the block which has been assigned to them. The state minister said President Granger has encouraged the government to ensure a more streamlined and focused conditions for companies operating locally. So that the companies feel comfortable that they can invest and their investment will be secure and that they can be positive returns for their investors. And at the same time, the Guyanese people feel um, satisfied that they are getting the best out of the transaction in their public, in the public interest. Sharing the same view, Director of Repsol, Mikhail Erkwa, indicates that his company is ready and willing to strengthen relations. We are here to, to just reinforce our commitment to, to Guyana. Yes. You know that uh, we, as a company, as Repsol, we have been here for already for 20 years. We just like uh, celebrated like, uh, this year mm -hmm. our uh, 20th uh, anniversary. Mm -hmm. And we just want to continue with this uh, long-standing uh, presence and relationship to the government of Guyana. Since the last conversation with the company in 2017, government has made minor changes in the structure of the oil and gas sector, which saw the creation of the Department of Energy. The company, which is currently drilling in the Kanuku block, is hoping to commit a well and continue more exploration in the offshore of Guyana. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. The much-needed restoration of City Hall will soon become a reality. Renetta LaFleur has all the details. A two-day stakeholder workshop on the restoration and conservation plans for the historic building, as well as the city engineers' building, began today at the Duke Lodge. Director of Culture Tamika Boswin described the plans as critical for the preservation of Guyana's heritage. Guyana has lost many, of, many beautiful buildings because of the absence of a proper management plan. The New Amsterdam Hospital and the original Sacred Heart Church are examples of heritage lost as a direct result of the absence of good management plans. Thus, the importance of developing these plans. The project is a collaborative effort between the European Union and the National Trust of Guyana. Ambassador of the EU delegation, Yerne Videtek, described the plan as the precursor for future related works on other heritage structures. City Hall has been described as the most picturesque structure and the most handsome building in Georgetown, as well as, well as one of the finest examples of Gothic architecture in the Caribbean. This plan will set the benchmark to enable a transfer of know-how on how to correctly restore other monuments of historical and symbolic value in Guyana. Some of the plan's components include an assessment of the current condition, a feasibility analysis, and restoration management plan for the preservation of the structure. City Hall's restoration could cost as much as $400 million. From the Duke Lodge with videographer Leon Leung, I am Renetta LaFleur for InfoHub. Over 100 young entrepreneurs are being given the opportunity to establish or expand their businesses as they pitch their ideas at Guyana's first ever Youth Business Summit today. Isaiah Bradford was there and filed this report. Malvani Lord and her business partner Nora Patterson from Silver Hill Region 10 are seeking funding to expand their venture in and El Cassava products. It's indigenous products and um, we plan on doing on a big scale of um, doing our products more and more locally and internationally. Well the summit is it's it's helping us uh, it's going to help us on a big scale because it's to um, expand our business. Peter Passard and Quincy Anderson also intend to take advantage of opportunities at the summit. There are so much aspects of business that we're not aware of and uh, a summit like this give us the opportunity to network, to learn from professionals, and it's something that we really need as youths in this, in this business environment. Well, I think the summit is a good initiative, and I'm looking forward for it in the future. Um, I'm excited to be a part of this summit, and I'm encouraging all young entrepreneurs to uh, start up the business, be consistent, and start small and let it grow. Acting President and Prime Minister Mose Nagamutu, delivering the feature address, said that managing and operating a business is a commitment young people must prepare themselves for. Many youths involved in business activities are unaware of the numerous procedures and support systems 
that can enhance their business endeavors. Many youthful entrepreneurs are sometimes not afforded the opportunity to meet the people who make critical decisions about doing business in Guyana. And I hope that this uh, summit will address this concern. Both Minister of Business Dominic Gaskin and Minister of Social Cohesion Dr. George Norton urge the young entrepreneurs to make the best of the opportunities. The summit is part of the National Youth Week 2018, which is being observed under the team empowering young people to foster national and community development through innovation. Isaiah Braffitt for InfoHub. As part of the Guyana Carnival's activities, local artisans got the chance to showcase their products at the Visual Arts and Craft Market on Main Street this morning. Zinni Williams reports. InfoHub spoke with some of the participants about their expectations of the Visual Art and Craft Market. Well, um, it's supposed to be uh, independent, so we're hoping that visitors would come, right? And these visitors now will see the kind of stuff that Guyanese do, craft-wise, right? And experience a Guyanese craft. Hopefully they take it, buy it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're out here for, sales. This market here is that it brought, about, it fast forwarded, you know, things that I had planned because I was working towards like accomplishing maybe about 100 exotic pieces that I can display on the internet and so. I felt confident to come out to this one because this one specifically catered for artists coming out and showcasing their work and advertising to the overseas people, the tourists and so on. So it gives us a better option as, as artists and craft people. I am expecting the general public to just come out and support our local stuff and we need the support. They can come out and see. We have, I have from culture clothes because they have culture, it's culture week culture day in school. I have the costume, they can come down and get it. I have craft, jewelry, dolls, you name it. They can come and pick it up right here. The two-day visual art and craft market is being hosted by the Ministry of Social Cohesion. It will give local artists exposure to locals and visitors alike and should also help to boost sales. Zanil Williams for Info Hub. After years of visiting Guyana, soca artist Kess returns for the country's 52nd independence activities and its first Guyana Carnival. Following his Tuesday on the Rocks performance, the popular Trinidadian artist shared his thoughts about the country from his first visit to now. The first time I came to Guyana, to the, just this time I came to Guyana, I feel the same way. It's just, it's a really um, unique place. It's a beautiful place and beautiful people and it was just... It was a surprise because I'm not gonna lie, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect when I came Ghana the first time, and it was, um, it was blow mind, and I, I didn't know much about it, but everybody was so friendly and warm and welcoming. Even though a lot of people didn't know me, then it was still somewhere that I knew that I felt a connection with. During his performance, Kess incorporated Guyanese artists to enhance the show. This, he said, maintains a commitment he made to promote what the country has to offer. I personally um, want to take it upon. Anything that I can do to let the region and the world know about Guyanese artists and Guyanese producers, and you know, um, and and that to me is a important thing because I feel as if the world and the Caribbean is still yet to know uh, all the Guyanese artists, and I think it's just as a matter of cross pollination, we need to continue to bridge the gaps between the worlds. <laughs> Artists also had high praise for Guyana. Guyana is just full of vibes. Like it's, it's so many to do. There's the people, there's the parties, there's all of that stuff. But there's also, you know, the nature aspect of it. You know, this is part of South America. So the majestic forests and the rivers and it's just something golden about it. And uh, I, I, I want Guyana to know how beautiful they are as well. Stefan Gabriel for InfoHub. 
If you use those new pedestrian overpasses, then please note that the one at Diamond will be temporarily closed to allow for the installation of the elevators. The Diamond overpass will be closed on Thursday and Friday. Keep enjoying Carnival, but be responsible. Don't drink and drive. Goodbye.